Hi there, Phil from statisticsmentor.com. In this video, I'm going to talk through an example of a non-parametric one-way ANOVA. The experimental design we're supposing is one-way between subjects ANOVA. The dependent variable is measured on a continuous scale and let's just say it's length of something. Factor is lab, laboratory, and there are five levels of that factor. We begin by checking for the assumptions for one-way ANOVA by looking at the box plot. And here's the command. What you can see is that the middle value looks quite different, doesn't it? The one for five is higher than one for four, for example. Is the normality assumption satisfied? Because one of the assumptions of parametric one over ANOVA is that your observations are normally distributed. Well this one is clearly looks to me like positive skew. This could be positive skew, alright? Now when the data are not normal we can either apply a transformation example by using a box cox transformation to make the data more normally distributed and then we can go ahead and apply parametric techniques or we can go ahead and use non-parametric methods and that's what I'm going to do in this example but before I do that I just want to we just want to look at the number of observations for each level of the factor here we can see the same number of observations 11 measurements taken for each lab that means what we've got here is a balanced design and Balanced design is great because even if your data is not normally distributed but slightly off normal, you, you can still use parametric techniques because this um, parametric F test will be robust, what I say, robust to departures from non normality. But we're going to press ahead and use non, uh, the non parametric method. For this, we're going to use the cross skull test. The null hypothesis is there is no difference in the middle value of the dependent variable between the labs. Right, so here's the cross skull wallace rank sum test. It's a chi-square degree of freedom 4, but we're interested in the p-value. The p-value is 0 0.0065 is way less than 0 0.05 indeed less than 0 0.01 so we can conclude there is very strong evidence that there is a difference in the middle value of the me measurement length across the levels of the factor laboratory in a com in common language, we can just say there's a, a high evidence here that we found there's a evidence of difference in the kind of all right the mean between the uh, between the uh, measurements of length between the labs. So next we go on to ask the question. Natural question is between what pairs of labs is there a difference? To do that, we run the pairwise dot wilcox dot test command. So length and then the factor. And we're adjusting the p-value one for only. That's standard. Enter. Right, so here we have a kind of table of p-values and the null hypothesis in each case we're comparing the like the mean value for the length in one lab to another and the null hypothesis is there's no difference. So between lab 1 and lab 2 the p-value is 1 so we do not reject the null. Remember we reject the null if the p-value is small like less than 0 0.05. So all these are very big. This value here 0 0.037 is less than 0 0.05 that means there is a difference between lab measurements of lab 2 and lab 4. What are the ones? Those are bigger than 0 0.05 and then there's another one lab 4 and lab 5. So we found differences between lab 2 and lab 4 and lab 4 and lab 5. 
going back to the box plot then, lab 2, that's the middle value there, just over 3.5, lab 4, below 3, saying there's a significant difference. Lab 4 and lab 5, significant difference. And that's pretty much it for basic analysis. We do note that for the p-values here we can see a whole load of warning messages. Uh, they're basically to say there are some ties in the data, so it cannot compute the exact p-value, but it's pretty much, so these are all pretty much approximations, but uh, it's pretty much okay to accept this. The more ties you have, the more of approximation it will be. Finally, just out of interest, I'll, let's just also run the parametric version and just see what, uh, as I said earlier, since the design here is balanced, this parametric version is robust. So scanning down the p-values of the differences here, we find difference here, that's the p-value less than 0.05, difference between 4 and 2, well we detected that in the parametric one, not non-parametric analysis, difference here, 4 and 5. So the analysis here, this agrees with what we found in the non-parametric version. So to recap, we can use this Kruskal Wallace in place of the F test for testing the differences across the levels of a factor when our data are not normally distributed. Okay, I hope that's been helpful, guys. You've been watching Phil from statisticsmentor.com.